So in the next few videos, we're going to look into the Venable function, which is called TM Recovery Resource Manager, and understand the general logic. Then we're going to analyze the actual patch to understand the vulnerability. And finally, we'll look at our initial strategy for exploitation. OK, let's get started. So this, this is the same diagram we saw earlier, and it kind of summarizes what the TM Recovery Resource Manager function does, in a sense because it accesses the key resource manager structure, gets the enlistment head to access the linked list of enlistments associated with that resource manager. And then it does a bunch of stuff on the enlistments, like checking if they are notifiable, and if so, queuing the notifications. So I will explain the vulnerable code first, and then we'll go over the patch in detail. But what you qu quickly see, I guess, from the patch diff is that it's, it's not an obvious vulnerability. And so we have to really understand the code that we annotated in Ghidra or Ida to make sense of what the vulnerability is. So the, we know the vulnerability occurs in this TM recover resource manager function and specifically within this while loop. So basically everything we are going to talk about for now exists within this while loop. And so what is going to happen when you recover a resource manager, the idea is that it is trying to resynchronize all of the enlistments so they can sort of agree on being in a specific state so that you can continue with the transaction. And so basically what this loop is doing is it's looping over all the enlistments associated with a key resource manager and it's going to notify them by setting a notification in the notification queue. And so basically what it does is it starts with the enlistment head field of the key resource manager and it will keep looping until the current enlistment that is being accessed points back to the resource manager. And then it is all done because every enlistment has been touched. So in the loop, the first thing it does is it checks the flags of the enlistment. And if the enlistment is marked as finalized, it just skips it and queries the next enlistment in the list. And we can see this else condition finishes at the end or the actual function. And so if that happens, if it goes into that else condition, it will just keep looping to process the next enlistment. And so from an exploitation perspective, we don't want this to happen as it won't touch any other code. So that's just one little point. We know that we, to trigger the vulnerability, we know enlistments should not be finalized. So then we analyze the else case we see that the code is going to do something with the enlistments. So it bumps the ref count. It waits on the mutex of the enlistments to make sure it is the exclusive code touching it. And it sets some Boolean flag, which we called B sign notification to zero for now. And we don't know what it is quite yet. Next, it has some logic that is going to decide whether or not it sets the send notification Boolean to one, basically. And this is going to be based off whether or not an enlistment is considered notifiable. And again, this is a flag that is undocumented, but we were able to work it out by looking at what this code does later. And so if the enlistment is notifiable, we can see two main things of interest. One is that it will set the send notification boolean to one, saying that a notification will be sent later. And another thing of interest is that it unsets the notifiable flag, and we'll see why later. But basically what happens is that this loop can end up getting a little bit disoriented because of state changes, and it might have to reprocess all of the enlistments from the very beginning, at which point you don't want to send duplicate notifications. So from our perspective, you will realize why in a second, but we are basically interested in getting this send notification flag set to one. So in order for it to be set to one, the enlistment has to not be superior, which is determined by the absence of the k enlistment superior flag and the state of the transaction that is associated with the enlistment that is currently being processed needs to be in one of these three states committed, in doubt, or prepared. And so as we analyze code like this, we are sort of making a recipe of things that we're going to need to do in order to reach the vulnerable code and trigger the vulnerability. Next, the enlistment mutex is unlocked 
which means other code in KTM from other threads could be interacting with the enlistment. And then assuming we manage to set this send notification flag to one, what happens is that the resource manager itself will be unlocked by releasing its mutex. And so originally when you're looking at this, it is not necessarily obvious why this is important, but when you are manipulating enlistments and you are changing their states, what potentially happens is that they might get freed and in order to do any sort of modification, the associated resource manager has to be unlocked. So this unlock is fairly interesting. And then the next step is it sends a notification by calling this TMP set notification resource manager function. And this is a public symbol by Microsoft. And this kind of explains why we call the, the flag B send notification. And basically what this TMP set notification resource manager function does is just queue a structure into the notification queue, which then correlates to the state changes that we were observing from userland in a previous lab. That's basically all it does. So then after TMP set notification resource manager returns, all of a sudden it queries the enlistment to see if a flag saying it was finalized is set. And so our guess here is that when an enlistment is prepared to be freed, it's state is changed to finalized and so here if the finalized flag is set it sets a new boolean to one and we call that boolean b enlistment is finalized and then it references the enlistment object which effectively decreases the reference count and then it waits again on the resource manager mutex to get exclusive access so it won't be obvious but this is actually the vulnerability and the problem is that this code here is trying to detect a state change of the enlistment, switching to a state where it might be finalized. And so it would get freed if the reference count goes down to zero. But what we saw here is that it releases the mutex of the enlistment and of the associated resource manager before queuing the notification into the notification queue. And so at this point, it might check the enlistment flag and the finalized flag will not be set. But between the time it checked that flag and the time it actually relocks the resource manager mutex in here, that finalized flag might become set, at which point the enlistment is actually finalized. And so what can happen is that because the enlistment has the op the reference object function called on it, its reference count will be lowered. And if in the process of being finalized by another thread, the reference count hits zero, the enlistment will be freed by the other thread. Or alternatively, if the finalized operation happens before the op difference count, op difference object call, this op difference object itself will free the enlistment. And so basically, because this code is trying to get exclusive access on the resource manager by waiting on its mutex, it might potentially take a while for it to log that resource manager. And so there is effectively a race condition based on mutex condition. And so what happens later, it tries to use this boolean that was set based off whether or not it detected that the enlistment might have been freed. And so if it thinks that the enlistment was finalized, then it might have been freed. And what it will do is that it will start from the enlistment head again by referencing it from the K resource manager structure. So it basically decides to rework the entire enlistment list from scratch, which is exactly why earlier we saw that if it notifies the an enlistment based off the K enlistment is notifiable flag being set, it unsets it right after. And so it is specifically to cope with this scenario where an enlistment was freed from the underneath logic and it needs to rework the entire list. You won't actually re-notify all of the enlistments. But if the enlistment wasn't detected as finalized, for instance, you want the race condition, and so it didn't actually set the enlistment is finalized flag. It will still reference the current enlistment pointer and access the next in the linked list by referencing the next same RM flink pointer. So at this point, if that enlistment was freed, it will now access freed memory or some other memory that replaced that enlistment. And it, it will go back into the beginning of the loop and start using it. And so we'll analyze what you can do with that type of thing later. So just to summarize the mental model of the TM recovery resource manager function, you've got the while loop touching the enlistment head. It is starting to parse all of these enlistments 
based off the next same RM flink pointer. Maybe it suddenly encounters one that got freed from another thread. So the finalized flag is set for that particular instance. And basically what it will do is it will rework the link list of an instance from the enlistment head and it won't actually be sending notifications for the enlistments that have already been notified. And eventually when it reparses them all until it gets to a new enlistment that hasn't been touched yet, it will continue from this point and notify them and so on until it reaches the, the end of the list which is the K-Resource Manager enlistment head. And so at that point, it exits the loop. 